Hello, everyone. Guess what? She's back. And we are going to be talking about it. But first, I want to remind you that I have books for sale down at a link in the description. I got two horror anthologies and a standalone slasher comedy novelette. Uh, so check out that link. Purchase my books. I'd love for you to do that. And also be sure to pre-order Ooze. This is an anthology of uh, body horror with 20 different authors, myself being one of those. And that book comes out on March 1st. And there is a pre-order link in the description. I'm excited for you guys to read my story. It's called Got You Too. And you get that along with 19 other fantastic uh, authors as they give their little bursts of body horror uh, to all of you. So be sure to check out all those links. Now let's get on with the video. Jade is back. Jade is back. That's right. Jade is back for the second installment of the Indian Lake uh, trilogy from Stephen Graham Jones. This one is called Don't Fear the Reaper. Uh, it is coming out on the 7th of February. So depending on, it's only a few days from when I'm recording this. So depending on when you're viewing this, uh, it could already be out. But if not, if it's before the 7th, there is a pre-order link in the description. Just a few more days. And you get to read the second in this trilogy. Uh, if you have not read My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones, I would highly recommend that you go and read that one before you begin this one. And it's not because this one cannot be a standalone, because it can. He gives enough background information, the basics of what happened in the first book, so that you're not going to be lost or confused or anything like that. But to get the full emotional impact, the full uh, brunt of what this story is about, uh, you just have to go back and read the first one. And My Heart is a Chainsaw was one of my favorite books the year it came out. And uh, I can't rec recommend that one enough either. <clears throat> and since this is going to be a trilogy, you know, might as well get caught up with it right now. That's my personal opinion. But feel free to grab this one as a standalone if you want uh, and you'll still be happy you did. Because our main protagonist, Jade, comes back into town. Uh, it's 2019 in the book. Uh, and after the massacre and the events that happened in My Heart is a Chainsaw, we're going to find out where she's been for a few years. And uh, she's been away for some time, but now she's finally back. Uh, and if you've read My Heart is a Chainsaw, you will know that Jade, in that book, was a, uh, uh, a teenager who had a horrible home life. And, but her obsession, her love, was slasher movies and horror movies. And she had an almost encyclopedic knowledge of even the more obscure slasher films, uh, often writing these long letters, uh, almost essay form, to her English teacher, uh, talking about some of them and comparing them to things in real life. <clears throat> uh, but she's a little older now, and because of what's happened to her since that massacre that happened at the end of the, the first book, uh, she's a bit more reserved at first. Uh, maybe she's not the same horror-obsessed girl that she once was. Or at least that's what she wants people to believe. But coincidentally, or maybe not, I'm not going to give anything away, uh, but at the same time she arrives back in town, uh, a serial killer makes his escape. Uh, Dark Mill South is his name. And uh, he makes his escape with one goal in mind, and that is to finish out his uh, revenge killings. And you will read about that and why and uh, all that good stuff. Don't worry about that. It will be explained to you. Uh, but we will find out that, of course, it's maybe not a coincidence that he escapes and goes on a bloody, brutal killing spree in Proof Rock, the, the town it's set in. Uh, in the middle of winter this time. And he does this about the same time that Jade comes back to town for the first time in a while. Um, and uh, this story is about how these two things are going to intersect, what connections they might have, 
and how we need to get Jade out of her. Uh, uh, we need her back into horror final girl obsession again in order to figure some of these things out. Uh, and it's great to see that progress <coughs> uh, when it happens. But uh, fortunately, we're going to meet some characters from My Heart is a Chainsaw that also suffered the events of that massacre we're going to hear from some old friends old familiar faces from that first book and see how their lives have changed since the events of that night and uh what they're up to we're also going to be introduced to new characters and even though jade is going to make alliances with some of these people uh i i love some of these new characters because there's this feeling you like you never know if they're going to be friend or foe to jade uh could it be that one or more of these people are secretly working with this serial killer to help him escape and to help him fulfill his plan or is it just paranoid paranoia is it just uh coincidence that certain things happen at, at certain times and people might know certain things that perhaps they shouldn't it could be or it might not be like I said, no spoilers for this one because it's a banger and I don't want you to know anything in, in advance. But uh, there are two things I really love about this book, just like with the first one, My Heart is a Chainsaw. And if you know anything about Stephen Graham Jones, you know that he wears his love of slasher movies on his sleeve. Uh, not just in his books, but in real life. And that, that, that love and respect he has for the genre translates into the page in, in his writing. And in both of these books, he he's he, he you can just tell that he's not putting these references in there, trying to be the smartest guy in the room, or or trying to name drop a bunch of obscure older slasher movies, you know, <clears throat> uh, to brag about himself or anything. They are used in in this world in this book. Uh, they are used in a very logical. Uh, way to try to figure out how to stop this Dark Mill South and uh, try to figure out his plan, who's working with him, if anybody, and uh, how to stop the massacre from continuing. And, of course, Jade, if you've read the first book, you know that she is the one that can put all these little bits and pieces together and seeing how her mind works from... Uh, uh, Things in slasher movies and applying them to this real life slasher uh, situation is always is always uh, fantastic. It's a uh, it's great to watch, and you can tell that he's put a lot of thought into this, and it comes organically in the story. He doesn't just throw those references in there, like I said, to try to uh, you know brag about his knowledge of movies. It's done in a very natural, organic way for this character. Uh, but the love is there. It's kind of like when you get a home-cooked meal for mom. It always tastes better than the restaurant because mom puts some love into her food. And you can also get that feeling when you're reading certain books. And this is one of those books, in my opinion. Uh, I really felt the love for the genre uh, shining through. And uh, that just made it a lot more fun uh, to read and a lot more engaging as a reader. And uh, it's fantastic. The other thing is that uh, uh, in any good sl uh, slasher, even if you know who the original killer is, there's always red herrings. Like, is, and in this book, you know, is Dark Mill Self working alone? Does he have help? Uh, is somebody helping him to fulfill these sick, twisted things he's doing? Uh and there are uh, different scenes that might point to different people that we just don't know about. You know, they could be friends, they could be foes. Uh, we don't know, but we will find all of it out. But again, like I said, no spoilers. But all of this makes for a uh, a fun, engaging, bloody uh, slasher movie type goodness kind of book that uh, you are just going to love if you love that kind of thing as much as I do. Because I loved it. I cannot recommend it enough. And I read this a few months ago, and it still sticks out in my mind. Uh, because now oh, it's finally release day almost, and uh, you have to pick up your copy of Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones. You will love it. 
I'm really excited and looking forward to the third part of this trilogy, and hopefully somewhere along the line in the future we'll get all three volumes in one big book. That would make my horror heart very happy. <laughs> so yeah, see what's up with Jade, see what's up with all the people that survived the massacre from the first book, and find out where this is going because we got an evil serial killer on the loose, and you can't go wrong with that especially not from a man who can write as well as Stephen Graham Jones. So as I said, there is a link down below where you can purchase it for yourself on Amazon, and I highly recommend that you do. And as always, I want to say thank you for taking some of your time, spending it here with me. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you. And until we meet again, keep reading spooky, my friends.